God bless you guys. This is Jonathan from Rise Ministries. Today's topic is all about suicide and all about whether a person that commits suicide will be going to heaven. This is a very taboo topic that most people do not touch, but I'm going to try to touch it with a sense of grace and compassion for the families who are suffering. So with that being said, we'll just jump right in. Um, suicide is the ending or termination of a person's life voluntarily. Uh, when it is decided that somebody's best option is suicide, they are oftentimes not in the best mindset because our mind is meant to, what our first instance is to do self-preservation. How do I protect myself? How do I keep myself from harm? And when, we, uh, when somebody commits suicide, what they're doing is they're saying that I would rather end my life uh, there's many varying degrees of uh, responses to somebody that commits suicide in the Christian circle. Uh, some Christians view it as an as an unforgivable sin, and the reason why they view it as an unforgivable sin because there is not a chance for that person to repent from their sin. Uh, it says in First John chapter one, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us. From all unrighteousness. So if that person was to uh, commit suicide, then what they're doing is they're forfeiting their life. And we are know that that's a sin because we have no right to end or to end someone else's life. Uh, the only person that has the right or to take someone's life is the creator who gave life. So by that person committing suicide, they have forfeited all rights to their life. They have sinned against God and there is no chance for them to have repentance. So many people view suicide as an unforgivable sin. For example, many people will view uh, the suicide of Judas Iscariot after he betrayed Jesus as the final nail on the coffin uh, to where he will go. So not only did he betray uh, Jesus, but in his regret uh, and his sorrow, he decided to end his life. And most people would say that Judas Iscariot, because of this action um, and not seeking forgiveness or not seeking uh, Jesus, this has gone and will be in hell. So there's another degree and there's a different school of thought. And that school of thought is how is suicide any different than any other sin that is committed? Now, I just want to make it clear that the Bible says that the only sin that is unforgivable is uh, blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. So some people will conclude that how is suicide, being that suicide, yes, is a sin, how, how would this sin be any different from any other sin? That sin in itself just separates you from the love of God, from God's love and from God, the walk of God. And in suicide, in the all technicalities, is no more different than if somebody lying. Now, the verses, the people who believe in this believe that when Jesus died on the cross for them, that he died and he atoned for all their sins so that he forgave his death, covered um, all the sins that they will have in the present, in the past, and in the future. So that when you, that if you were to die a Christian and you've committed suicide as a Christian, then God will still have the grace and mercy to forgive you of that sin. In Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39, it says, it also assures us that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord, neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor death, nor anything else in all creation. So many would argue that nothing can truly separate us from the love of Christ and that Christ has already forgiven us for the sins that we will commit, the sins in the future, the sins in the present, and the sins in the past. Now, what is the answer? I wish I knew. Um, there's a lot of different varieties of uh, people who may have committed suicide. The one thing that I do tell you that when someone does commit suicide, they have forfeited any opportunity or any chance for them to continue to change the narrative that may be going in their life or continue to be used by God. So once a person has committed suicide, they have lost any opportunity on this earth to change their placement in heaven or to alter 
the lives or save the lives of somebody else. They have decided that they are no longer willing to take on the mission that God has done or has commanded over their life. The next thing that I, I would say is that that when we start to speculate, then we then we are have a lot of unknown answers. Did the person that committed suicide did they regret and repented? while they're while they're in the act of committing suicide does the person that jumps off the bridge does that person halfway down repent and reg and regrets his decision and repents truthfully to the lord but even or does this person uh commit the suicidal action accidentally that they have the rope around their neck or the noose around their neck and they decide at the last moment that they don't want to but they slip anyway and end up hanging themselves it leaves a lot of unknown questions. And what I would say is that for those that commit suicide, um, they, and the scary thing for those families is that they don't have the full assurance of if their loved one is in heaven. And that's the scariest thing. Because what we see here is that when we die, uh, at least for our family's sake and for the people who, who we pass away, even if we pass away prematurely, um, if they, if our lives are in the Lord, we can have the confidence that we know where we are headed. For a person who has committed suicide, the conf there is no confidence that you know where you are headed. You have left this up to God's uh, mercy and God's ultimate judgment. Because what the Bible says is that in Romans eleven thirty three that God's grace and mercies are beyond our understanding. And his judgments are unsearchable and beyond knowing. And yes, we all will be judged by God for our actions. But what I would say is for those who may be contemplating it as a way out of whatever situation they may be in, I will tell you this, that this, that is not God's plan for you. And that even though you may feel like you're, you are, won't be missed, you will be hurting someone. Someone somewhere will be hurting by your disappearance. It may be your parents, it may be friends, it may be a coworker that you might have not known that many influence. It may be a small child that looks up to you, but somebody somewhere will be missing your, uh, your appearance on this earth. And most of all, our God in heaven, his plan for your life was not for you to end it. He did not give you this life so that you can go about and say, you know what, I, I do no longer want to live on this. He has a purpose for your life. So what I ask you to do, brother and sister, is instead of you deciding to end it, try to find the meaning of why you are here. And I promise you that you'll find that meaning in Christ Jesus because our God loves us unconditionally and he made you intentionally. Even if your uh, birth was something that was not intended, even if you were an accident, even if everybody around you may say that they hate you, trust me, that our God loves you, and by extension, that our God loves you, I love you. So if there's anybody out there that is struggling with suicidal thoughts, I'll be dropping description, I will describe links and places to receive help in the description box below. Or if you know somebody, uh, don't be afraid to speak up because this is a matter of life and death. And it may be not just a matter of life and death, but their spiritual life is also in the balance. So brothers and sisters, I know I didn't give you a direct answer. I know that some people will say this is an unforgivable sin. I know some people will say that God's grace is enough. I will tell you, I don't know. We don't know at the end of the day. We don't know how God would judge. And But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we are fully assured that we are going with Christ. And the only way we do that is by following God's commandment for our life. With that being said, let us pray. Father God, we come before you. I pray for every person that is watching this uh, video. I pray that they understand that you have a plan and you have and you love them unconditionally and that they were not here by mistake, Jesus, that they may forward this message to somebody who may be struggling, that they may be a, a reason why somebody may not end their life, that they may point you they may point to you the creator and that the love that you have for them is unconditional, Jesus. Remind them of your love. Even when they feel like they're useless and they can't do nothing right, Father God, remind them that you are there with them each and every day. In your name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you guys. As I mentioned, my name is Jonathan from Rise Ministries, and we'll be praying for each one of you guys who have watched and will be watching this cast.
God bless you guys.